we will travel a circular route by hire car and experience what each region has to offer. We will cross into New Brunswick by ferry, then on to Prince Edward Island via the 8 mile long Confederation Bridge. We will then take another short ferry ride to Cape Breton Island before returning along the famous Marine Drive back to Halifax. The Lord Nelson Hotel is across the road from the Halifax Public Gardens. Behind these gates is a 16 acre oasis. There are over a hundred different species of trees, a bandstand and a magnificent wrought iron entrance. The Natural History Museum houses collections and permanent exhibits on man and his environment in Nova Scotia. It is the place to learn about whales, dinosaurs and Micmac culture. Signs of Halifax's past are everywhere. This replica boat passes St George's Island. In 1755 every Acadian in this area was deported here. The harbour area is now a more peaceful affair geared to tourism. Our first stop on the way to Digby is the famous Peggy's Cove. Today this place is primarily a tourist attraction, although its inhabitants still fish for lobster and the community retains a rustic underdeveloped appearance. We travel 63 miles to the historic town of Lunenburg. Lunenburg was established in 1753 as the first British colonial town outside of Halifax. The new town area became fashionable and wealthy merchants and professionals built impressive houses here. On the waterfront, the Fisheries Museum of the Atlantic is a world-class museum complex. There are wharfside vessels to explore, a magnificent aquarium and three floors of exhibits. The remainder of our day's journey, some 98 miles, is spent travelling onwards to Digby. We overnight at the Pines Hotel, a very comfortable resort just down the road from the ferry terminal. It's Saturday the 20th of June and we're just about to depart the Pines Hotel in Digby to get the ferry to St John. It's about 20 to 7 in the morning and um, we are all ready to set off. It's a three hour ferry crossing from here to St John, New Brunswick. The Princess Acadia is a comfortable ship. If you like strolling on deck during the crossing, you might catch sight of the endangered right whale. After leaving the ferry, we travel 68 miles to St Andrews by the Sea. The Alonquin Hotel opened in 1889 and St Andrews became Canada's first holiday resort. It's Sunday and we're at St Andrews by the Sea. The town is well preserved with many original buildings still in place. After the American Revolution, the bay was a scene of a thriving smuggling trade. The marine life of Passamaquoddy Bay is so varied that St Andrews is the home of three research laboratories. The blockhouse was built as a coastal defence structure in the War of 1812 between the British Empire and the United States but never saw action. From St Andrews it's about 54 miles to Fredericton. we stay off the busy road at the Comfort Inn Motel. It's okay for one night's stay.
Leaving Fredericton, we travel 120 miles to the Prince Edward Island Bridge. It's Tuesday today and we're at Cape Tormentine. Behind me is the bridge leading to Prince Edward Island. This magnificent structure is about eight miles long. I'm just looking on the map to see where Charlottetown is um, on Prince Edward Island, which is our next stop at the Best Western. It takes about an hour from here, Cape Tormentine, to our hotel at Charlottetown. We're at Peaks Wharf on Prince Edward Island. The town is best explored by a number of self-guided walking tours. The next leg is a 45 minute ferry trip to Cape Breton Island and then on to Badek. We've boarded the ferry at Woods Island to go across to Caribou on the mainland. At the deck, we stay here for the next two nights. On the second day, we explore the area. And it seems like there aren't many cars on the road until we arrive at this little ferry station. The cable ferry pulls us swiftly across the river and onwards we go. We walk along a path that leads to the various buildings that represent Nova Scotia's settlement throughout periods of history. The Highland Village gives you some feeling of what those first settlers from Scotland had to face as they lived through the first winters. The atmosphere is further enhanced by the presence of many typical livestock animals. This beautiful site overlooks the Bradour Lake The next leg of our journey is some 70 miles to Sydney. The Cambridge Suites is a comfortable 145 room hotel. It's Sunday and we're just leaving the Cambridge Suites Hotel um, on our way to Liscombe. We travel next 169 miles along by the scenic Bradour Lake Drive to Liscombe. It's a pleasant contrast to be staying out in the Canadian countryside. We continue south along the Marine Drive today to Halifax International Airport, about 121 miles. Day one, we flew to Halifax by Air Canada. On day two, we explored Halifax. On day three, we travelled to Digby. Day four was spent in Digby. Day five, we travelled to St Andrews by the Sea. Day six was spent exploring St Andrews. Day seven, we travelled to Fredericton. Day 8, we travelled to Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Day 9, was spent in Charlottetown. Day 10, we travelled to Bedeck. Day 11, was spent around Bedeck. Day 12, we travelled to Sydney. Day 13, we travelled from Sydney to Liscombe. Day 14, we travel from Liscombe back to Halifax International Airport. Day 15, we arrived home. 